With more than $2.5 billion worth of adjustments since January, we've worked collaboratively to solve, in both fiscal years, structural budget gaps, and the bill we signed today, this $38.1 billion budget, responsibly keeps spending growth to about 3 percent, below the growth in tax revenue. This amount is reasonably within our tax revenue projections and ensures that state government will live within its means. And as mentioned, the budget contains no new taxes and ensures the anticipated reduction for the people of Massachusetts and the state income tax to 5.1 percent on January 1, 2016. In addition, we're also increasing the earned income tax credit by 23 percent to 23 percent, which is a 50 percent increase, which helps over 400,000 low-income working families. This was a major priority for the Lieutenant Governor and me during the course of the campaign. And I want to thank Senate President Stan Rosenberg and the rest of the team in the Senate, as well as the folks in the House, for working closely together to figure out a way to get this done. We put together an expert panel, bipartisan basis, to take a look at all the issues associated with what went wrong and what needed to be dealt with at the MBTA. And we're very pleased that working with the legislature, this budget creates a fiscal and management control board for the MBTA expands the Mass DOT board and includes a number of other important tools in the toolkit to help us fix the T. And today this budget fortifies our commitment to be a reliable partner to every city and town in our Commonwealth. Unrestricted local aid is increased to $980 million, which fulfills our campaign commitment to increase the rate of local aid to 75 percent of the state revenue rate growth rate in year one. And this budget also provides funding for increased investments in summer jobs and supports 2.6 million worth of grants and technical assistance for our newly created Community Compact Cabinet, which I am very honored to be chairing for our Commonwealth to promote and reward best practices at the local level. We're also filing an end of the year supplemental budget for fiscal 15 that includes $25 million in additional snow and ice recovery relief for our cities and towns, $5 million for homeless services, and $28 million to begin to implement the recommendations of our opioid working group, which includes efforts to provide substance abuse support through Mass Health, the Department of Public Health, the Department of Mental Health, and a series of school-based education initiatives. Signing today's budget is an important moment for taxpayers businesses, and cities and towns here in the Commonwealth. Our administration will continue to focus on making government work, fixing those things that are broken, and making sure that the hard-earned taxpayer dollars are used as efficiently as possible and as effectively as it can be to support our families, to support our communities, and to support our economy.